Hey, good morning, online family. How are you all doing this morning? It is so great to be back in this seat doing Bible studies with you guys again. For the last two weeks, I've been unable to do Bible studies due to technical difficulties with our old camera, but I got a brand new camera, I got a brand new microphone, and so I am ready and I am back in business. Thank you, Pastor Greg, for that. I really and I truly appreciate it. For those of you guys who do not know who I am, my name is Justin Greenwell. My wife and uh, Casey and I, we run the uh, Global Vision Online community. We are the GVBC Online Support Ministry. So whenever you guys see uh, us uh, posting things or commenting or responding or praying with people, that's either me or it's my wife, Casey. Uh, also, guys, before we do get started, I want to let you guys know, for those of you all who are new, again, we have a phone number for you guys. Now, that phone number is for if you guys need minister to, if you guys need some prayer, if you guys have any questions. Now, this phone number is not a direct line to Pastor Greg, and you cannot make appointments with anything concerning the church. If you guys want to make appointments in that manner, then you guys need to hop on Google and Google Global Vision Bible Church, and it'll pop up right there, and there's a phone number right there on the front Google page. You guys can call that number. This phone number is just literally a cell phone that my wife and I have for you guys, and uh, it's just so that we can pray with you guys, so that we can minister to you guys, and any questions concerning uh, the community page. So that number is 615-878-2031. Again, I'll say it again for y'all. It's 615-878-2031. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and hop on in here. I'm going to pray real quick, and we're going to get started. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you and I praise you. I thank you for everybody who is watching this today. Father, I pray that the word would just come alive for them today. Father, I pray that their ears and their hearts would be open to your word, Father. Father, I pray that you would just give me the words to speak. Let this lesson be pleasing to you and let it be an honor of you, Father. So just use me as your mouthpiece, Father, today as I, as I speak your words and as I teach this lesson, Father. I pray that there will be changed hearts. I pray that minds would be open today to see the truth of your love and grace and mercy in their lives, Father. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this beautiful day. I pray as that everybody goes out today, Father, that you would put a hedge of protection around them. Keep them safe. Protect their minds from the any, any, any uh, enemy attacks. Keep their hearts guarded, Father, for you. And keep their bodies safe, so, Father, so that no harm will come nigh their dwelling. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this beautiful, wonderful day that we get to spend with you. And I pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. So today we are going to be at, uh, we are going to be in Philippians chapter four, and we are going to start in verse four. So if you guys have Bibles and you guys want to flip over to that real quick, by all means, I'm going to give you all a second to do so. I'm going to take a drink real quick before we get started. <laughs> All right, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. And Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. See, Paul, he tells us twice, rejoice, rejoice. Now, why do you do that? Well, because I know that a lot of times, the very first time I hear something, I'm going to almost forget it instantly. I'm one of those people, I'm really bad with names. And so I can literally shake your hand. You can say, hey, I'm Tom. And I'll say, hey, how you doing? My name's Justin. And by the time I say my name, I've almost probably have forgot what the gentleman's name was. So Paul says it twice to remind us because it's very important. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You know, so easily we allow our situations, guys, to just dictate our attitude. You know, we wake up in the morning and, you know, we go to turn the coffee pot on and we walk away and we come back and realize that it didn't brew coffee the way we wanted it. And all of a sudden it just ruined our whole morning. We let little bitty situations dictate our attitude so easily. I know that there are plenty of times where I just get bent out of shape over nothing. And so I have to remind myself, why am I doing this? This is not like, I don't need to be concerning myself with these little bitty things and getting myself all bent out of shape and having a bad attitude about it. You know, a lot of times, and it could even be bigger things, guys, you know, it could be our financial situations. It could be our relationships. You know, it could even be our children. Like, guys, I know I have three kids, so there's plenty of times where <laughs> I feel like that they're pushing me over the edge. But 
Paul says to rejoice. And you know what, guys? And a lot of times people can even get tied up in with their church and allow their church to just give them a really bad attitude. Now, I know our church is great. I love our church. I love the people here. I could not be happier that the Lord had placed me here under the uh, Canvas Cathedral. I love it here. Absolutely love it. But guys, but we let little bitty things. And, you know, honestly, when we look at the big, broad picture of things, our finances, Guys, that's my new. This is this is all earthly things and you know, we have to remember that Paul, whenever he wrote rejoice and again I say rejoice, he was sitting in a musky dark jail cell. Like this man just got beaten, thrown in prison. He didn't know whether or not he was going to die, like if he was even going to survive. I mean, he was put in unimaginable situations and no man should have endured what Paul was enduring right here. I mean, especially since he was doing nothing more than going around and preaching the gospel. He had done, he did not steal, he did not kill, he did nothing to, uh, to come against anybody. He was only preaching Jesus, 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 Jesus. And they had a, such a problem with it, they, they threw him in a cell. And, you know, guys, when we can look at that situation and say, well, you know, in our own physical man's eyes... Guys, he really didn't have a lot to be rejoicing about. I mean, this man has been whipped. This man has been beaten. This man has been stripped. This, I mean, he's uh, he's been thrown in prison. He was been shipwrecked. He's so many bad things. People have come against him. I mean, just bad things have happened to Paul one thing after another. I mean, the man was practically blind. Uh, you know, so when people looked at Paul, they said, there's really not a whole lot that this man should be rejoicing about. But Paul was rejoicing because he knew that his name was in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, he knew that he, that it was just such a blessing because he was a child of the King. Guys, that within itself. See, we don't worry about all these earthly things. We look at the ultimate goal, and that goal is being making our making heaven our home. And when the Lord looks at you and says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Guys, that is our own personal goal. Now, there are other goals while we are here on earth, but that is where we want to be. But he was rejoicing because he was out saving lives. He was out preaching the gospel. And that is really, that is really our goal, guys, here on this earth. Uh, obviously, yes, as Christians, we are to make heaven our home. But whenever we accept that free gift, then yes, we are going to make heaven our home. You know, because we have the faith to believe and we have the works to back it up. Uh, James says, faith without works is dead. What are the works? We need to go out and start preaching the gospel to others, living a life that is pleasing to God. And so, guys, this is what Paul was doing. So his goal here on this earth was saving souls for the kingdom. And so he was rejoicing in that. He was happy about that. He counted all as a blessing to be persecuted for Christ's sake. You know, he said also, uh, he said to, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So he had no fear of dying. He was here rejoicing in no matter what situation he was in. So even whenever he was in a musky jail cell, he was saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I'm telling you this again, I'm reiterating this. I say rejoice, rejoice guys. Guys, because the thing is, guys, is that we have a father who sticks with us. He sticketh closer than a brother. Guys, we have a father that will never leave us and he will never forsake us. He blesses us every day. He is always watching over us. He cares for us. He has compassion on us. We have a heavenly father that loves us and that is willing to lend an ear to our prayers and hear us. Guys, that within itself and everything that we have. Guys, are we breathing this morning? Are we sitting in front of a computer or a phone? Are we sitting in a chair? Guys, that's a blessing from the Lord. Do, are we, do we live in America? Do we live in a free country? Guys, that is a, it's not really getting so free anymore, but we are still in a free, the one of the most freest countries in the world. Guys, that is a blessing. The Lord has, oh, do we have a family? The Lord has overly blessed us. And so we need to start rejoicing for those things. Guys, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. In verse five, it says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. 
Paul is saying, let your moderation be known unto all men. He's pretty much what he's saying is Paul's telling people to stop being so extreme about the things of this world, the things that are not important to God. Guys, we, we can get so caught up in video games. Guys, we can get so caught up in movies, musicians, you know, uh, entertainers, sports. Guys, I know, I know before, like, I still enjoy watching a game, guys. Don't get me wrong, but I used to be ate up with it. I'd be from the draft all the way through. That's all I would talk about. I would be ate up with it. Also, I love hunting. And guys, I would get ate, whatever, as a younger man, I was ate up with That's all I wanted to talk about, hunting, fishing, you know. And so I just consumed myself with it. Guys, we need to stop being so extreme about the things of this world. If we just took the things that we are so extreme about and we roll that over into the gospel, into the word of God, guys, we would be winning souls like crazy because everywhere we go, we would just be preaching the word, preaching the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus and what he's done for you. Because the thing is, guys, is each and every one of us who are saved, who are Christians, born again Christians, we all have a testimony. Every single one of us have a testimony. And we should be sharing that testimony with everybody. Guys, Jesus, he pulled me up out of that miry clay. He set my feet upon the rock. I was doomed for hell and he saved me. Guys, that's enough to start running around and telling everybody about that. Guys, we need to start spreading true love to people because that is love. Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Do you want to make heaven your home? Did you accept the gift that was done on the cross? Then we should be spreading that to everybody else. Do you want to go to hell? No, of course we don't want to go to hell. So then therefore, love your neighbor as yourself. We don't want anybody else to go to hell either. So we got to get this whole uh, analogy that the world has tried to twist what love is. You know, this perverse love is love or or, you know, love is tolerance. It's, it's tolerable. We don't ever want to judge anybody. You know, we don't want to step on anybody's toes. We should let people live the way they want. That's true love. Because if we try to tell people that they're living wrong, well, now you're a bigot. Now you're, you're a racist. You're, you know, everything's racism now. If you just, if you mention something, all of a sudden it's racism. Guys, it's not racism. It's not bigotry. It's, it's not it's not that. It's true love. Jesus, his very first sermon was repent. And Jesus loved people more than anybody else on this earth. More than anybody else on this earth. He loved people more. No one could ever amount to the love that Jesus had for people. And his very first thing, whenever he come out and he started in his sermons, whenever he started his ministry at age 30, it was repent, repent. So guys, we should be exuding that same love. Now, we don't go on the corner with a bullhorn and start yelling at everybody, telling them that they're going to go to hell. I am not saying that. Don't do that. That, that does not help anything, okay? Guys, whenever we are met in situations and we're uh, speaking to individuals and the door is open to speak about the love of Christ, we should not turn that down. We should, we should speak the love of Christ. They should see the love of Christ in us and see that we are not being judgmental, but that we love them and we want to show them that there is a better way. Because guys, these people, these people, they don't have to live in all this depression. They don't have to live with these drug addictions. They don't have to go through life feeling alone and unaccepted. Because guess what, guys? They, just like you, they are accepted by Jesus Christ. But here's the thing. All they have to do is accept Jesus as their Savior and repent and turn away from their unclean living. And Jesus will bestow upon them joy and peace and life. And they will become heirs of God and they will be grafted into the fold of God, into the family. Guys, all they have to do is accept but how are they going to accept something if they've never been taught it? We, we as Christians, we have to go out and spread the word. We have to start throwing out the seed, planting the seeds in people's lives. That's our job. That's what we have to do. So guys, I thank God, guys, that someone told me about Jesus. 
Because if they wouldn't have, I would have been lost. I would have been bound for hell. I would have been running around, not just chasing after that next high, trying to figure out what's going on in my life. How come I can never get ahead? How come I'm always depressed? How come I can't kick my addictions? Guys, if no one would have ever taught, told me about Jesus, then I would still be in that situation. I would not be sitting here in front of this camera. I would not be here under the canvas cathedral. Thank God that somebody instilled the word of God in me. We as Christians, guys, we're called to spread that gospel. We're called to spread the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that he, Jesus, is the only way to heaven. You know, everybody's got this misconstrued idea that we can be good and make our way to heaven or or we can just have any religion uh, that that preaches or teaches good living. And, uh, you know, well, if, if I eat uh, non-GMO, you know, then, I, you know, I'm probably going to make heaven my home. No, guys, it's the only way is through Jesus. And we have to, we are the responsible ones that have to go out and tell these individuals that. So, guys, that is what we need to be extreme about because it said he said the lord is at hand the lord's coming and this was almost two thousand years ago he said the lord is at hand so we are two thousand years closer to the lord being at hand guys it is upon us it will be here before we know it and so the devil is running around every single day capturing lives and deceiving people and we as christians are sitting around and allowing it to happen the devil is our enemy, and we have to combat him every single day. He is taking people away from the Lord. He is taking souls and dragging them. He's gonna. He's dragging them to hell with him. And it's our responsibility to grab a hold of these people and show them, no, don't go with them. Here, this is the way that we should go. Christ says that he gives us life and life more abundantly. So like I said earlier, we don't have to live in all of these emotional issues and just wondering from day to day, what is going to happen? What is it? We're going to have, we have faith in the Lord that he will take care of us. We are children of God and we want everybody to be. And so guys, we need to start going out, preach the word, start talking to people. Now I know I don't want you to get, you know, now I know, you'll do well, I don't really know who to teach, preach to. I don't know. I, I don't know the word that well to where I can go out and spread the gospel. Well, guys, now is the best day that you'll ever have to start getting in the Word, to start reading it, to start getting to know the Word. It says, study to show yourself approved. Peter says to give to, to ready to give account for your faith. So whenever someone confronts you about your faith, you are ready to give an account. Well, how are we going to be ready to give an account? Because we know the Word, we can back it up, and we know what the Father's promises are, we know what the Word of God says, and we can combat the enemy, when he tries to come against us and tries to twist the word of God and try to confuse the Christian people into believing something that is in the word, that's not. That it's not. And so many times, even preachers get up there and say, well, the word of God says this. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Who told you that? Well, the Bible says it. Well, you show me where the Bible says it. And then they go and try to find it and they realize they can't even find it because all they did was hear it from somebody else and they're parroting it. And then guess what? That gentleman up there parroted what he heard. And now we're parroting what we heard. And before you know it, the Satan has done twisted the word of God and tried to make it as biblical truth whenever it was not biblical truth at all. Never was. Never will be. So guys, next verse. It says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. He says, be careful for nothing. So in other words, what he's saying is, is don't be anxious. Don't be scared of what the future holds. You say, well, you know, that's really hard to do because my future, you know, some people are looking at it right now saying, well, my future looks pretty bleak. And so I'm pretty worried about my future. You know, my retirement fund is taking a big hit right now. My IRA is dropping. My 401k, man, it's hurting right now. This economy is killing me. It's almost going to be $5 a gallon. The food is going to, is going to be a, is, is a, we got a food deficit going on right now. You know, everything is starting to come to a head and it's the enemy's tactic 
to spread fear into our lives. But guys, Paul says, don't be anxious for nothing. Be careful for nothing. In another translation, this is King James, be careful for nothing. But another translation says, it literally says, be anxious for nothing. Guys, it's not if we are taking our cares to the... It, you know, here's the thing, guys, is that we will be anxious. We will be scared if we are not taking our, uh, our cares to the Lord. Laying our burdens down at the foot of the cross like we are told to. See, that's biblical. See, Jesus knows that there are terrible things that are happening in this world all the time. All the time. Bad things are happening to us. You know, we always have things that the world says that we should fear. You know, fear this, fear that. You know, fear uh, your for your job security. Fear that you'll even be able to drive your car. Fear the time you get in your car that you might get a wreck. Fear that your children won't grow up. Uh, fear uh, that your that your children are gonna live with you forever. You know, fear that your grand that your parents might die. You know, it's just fear after fear after fear. Every single day. fear that your finances. You know, guys, it's just the enemy just spreads so much fear into people, and we eat it up. We grab it and we hang on to it. And we fight for that fear, you know, and then we go and we have to take medications. We have to go into the doctors. Say, I just don't understand. I just, I'm just an absolute wreck. Guys, that's why Jesus said, lay your burdens down. Give your burdens to me. Cast your cares upon me. And then I will put my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, that was not a suggestion. Jesus wasn't suggesting to do that. He told us to do it. As Christians, that's what we're supposed to do. How do we do that? We have faith to believe that he will see us through. We have faith to believe that he will. He is there. He is beside us. He is a good father. He will take care of us. He's not going to throw us in a ditch and leave us. That if we are living in the will of the father, then no bad thing is going to happen to us. We have got to start allowing him to guide our footsteps. And the only reason why we would be anxious is because we are stumbling around in the dark. That's the only reason why we should be anxious because we have no idea what's coming in front of us and we are just scared because we feel like that we have to control the narrative. We have to control the situation. And so we're scared. We're anxious and we're stumbling around in the dark and we don't know which way we're going and the enemy is just putting blockades and putting tri and putting uh, tripping... <clears throat> stones in front of us and we're falling over them and we have no idea what's happening and we're like lord where are you but yet we keep trying to control the situation guys we cannot be living in that type of lifestyle where we don't know what's next we don't know what's next but it's but whenever we allow the lord to move in our lives and we give it to the lord then we're not worried about it. Because look, it says that Jesus, he's a lamp unto our feet and he's a light unto our path. He will brighten the way. But we have to have the faith, guys, that he will do so. When we let him direct our footsteps, we need to not be anxious of anything. Guys, I think that we can all agree as Christians that God is not for our harm, but he's for our good. Okay, so whenever we have faith in the Lord, he's not gonna hurt us He's not going to cause bad things to happen to us. He's for our good. He's going to guide us. Guys, we're his children. But the only way that we're going to know which way he wants us to go is to seek his will and start laying down your own will. Okay? So guys, take your will, all your wants, your desires, everything that you want in life, throw it away. That sounds like a, that sounds like a tall order, but I'm telling you guys, Take it and throw it in the trash can. It's garbage. It's, if it's not what God's will is for your life, it's junk. Throw it away. Start seeking his will for your life because guess what, guys? Whenever I started seeking his will for my life, oh, man, things were 100 and over 100. I, I don't even know. They, they are so much better now than I could have ever, ever imagined. And, guys, I'm telling you this. I used to live in Indiana. So I was a business owner. I had been running this business for over 10 years. From the outside looking in, 
Oh, I was doing great. I had a good business. I had a pretty hefty sized bank account. I drove the brand new cars. I had the house. I had the fence. I had the decks. I had everything in the, in the town that I wanted. My kids were great. I, from the outside looking in, I was set. I was golden. You know, I was right as rain. But here's the thing, guys, is that from the outside looking in, I had everything I ever wanted. But on the inside, I was depressed. I was angry. I was anxious. I was, I was an addict. I was addicted. Like guys, I had, I had addiction problems. Like I was an absolute disaster. So guys, I realized I, I, I came to the conclusion that the things of this world, they mean really nothing to be honest, because now that I have peace, I have the peace of the father. I have the blessings of God in my life, not my own blessings, but the blessings of God, because I chose to walk in his will and not my own. See, he, whenever I said, Lord, I want to be in your will. I don't want to do my will anymore because this is what it's gave me. It's, it's messed me up on the inside. I'm messed up. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm a, in a constant battle every single day. And so I said, Lord, I want your will to be done in my life. Wherever you tell me to go, I will go. Whatever you tell me to say, I will say. Whatever you want me to do, I will do, Father. Pull me out of my box. Make me uncomfortable. Lead me into where you would have me go because I know that there's more to life than what I'm doing right now. But I had to be a submissive individual. I had to layer it down, which was hard for me because I'm a very type A personality. I've always been a business owner. I've always been a type of person where I see that there's something that isn't working properly. And I always felt like I'm the person that's going to fix it. I will fix this situation. Let me take control of the situation. And so that's how I've always lived my life. And so I had to completely change the way I was living. I had to let him start to control my life. I had to allow, I had to put everything down. I had to say, Lord, I give my finances to you. I give all these situations to you. I give my kids to you. I give my wife to you. I give everything that I am to you. It's yours anyways, Father. Do your will in my life. And he made me give up everything except for my wife and my children and my dog. <laughs> but I had to give up everything. I had to leave my hometown. I had to sell the house that I love that, that I just, I fixed up just the way my wife wanted it. Uh, I was in a good area. Um, I had my business that I poured myself into for over 10 years, blood, sweat, and tears, guys. I mean, I built this thing and it was hard. And so I built that thing up and I love my business. I love my job. I had to give it up. And so God had different plans for me. And I thought, what in the world could be better than what I'm doing right now? Oh, he had so much more in store for me and little did I know. But see, I did not know the future, but he did. And I trusted him to show me that future. And that's what we need to start doing, guys. We need to start trusting the Lord that his plans for us are good and not for our harm. Quit holding on to all your burdens. Stop. Stop doing that. Stop holding on to all your burdens, guys. Because if we keep doing that, we are going to keep suffering. You know, Paul says that we look through a glass darkly, which would be like us trying to look through a stained piece of glass. We can't see very far ahead of us, but God can. And so we have to trust his eyesight. You know, it's kind of like being on it. It's kind of like being in an airplane or on a train. We can't see out in front of us, but are we, are we trusting the engineer of that train to get us where we're supposed to go and he's not going to run it off the tracks? Are we trusting that pilot that he's going to land us safely and fly us through the air to get to our destination? Of course we are. Or we wouldn't get in that plane or we wouldn't get on that train. And the thing is, guys, we can't see what's out in front of us. All we see is what's out the side of us. That's all we can see. But yet we have trust to believe that he's going to get us there safely. Guys, we should have that same trust and faith in God that he's going to get us there safely. He is our engineer. He is our pilot. He is going to get us there safely. All we have to do is trust him. Sit down. Be quiet. Be still. And wait for the Lord to show up and show out in your life. Guys, it's so important. It's so important. Because whenever we do that, 
guys. It's just, it's going to change your life completely. It says, but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Be thankful in every situation that you're in. Let your requests be known to God. Give it to the Lord. Allow him to work it and allow him to do what he does best, guys. And whenever we do that, there will you will start to see a change in your life. A good change in your life. And guys, and I'll tell you this, even whenever things are looking hard, even whenever the future is starting to look kind of a little bit bleak, we can still have the peace to know that God's going to take care of us. That's just like Pastor Greg said uh, a few Sundays ago, whenever he was talking about the economy and how it's it's going to crash. It, there's just no way it's going to sustain like this forever. There's just, it, it's not. And so he said, don't worry about it. Don't worry because God's got his children. He's going to take care of you no matter what. No matter what. And we keep on reading on down. It says, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. See, guys, when we start to petition the Lord and start submitting not only our situations but also ourselves wholly to him, like I said earlier, then we will receive the peace of Jesus. When we are confronted with situations, which we will, which we will be confronted with situations, guys, it's going to happen, guys, that we don't have to worry because the peace of God is over us and the peace of God is in us. You know, whenever Abraham was told to leave the land, leave his land and go to a foreign one, he had peace to know that God was going to be with him and that God was going to work it out. When Moses walked up to the Red Sea and saw there was no way to cross he had peace to know that God would provide a way, and he did, and he split that sea in half. When Joshua, whenever he walked around the walls of Jericho, he was at peace to know that God was going to deliver their enemies into their hands. When Paul was sitting in the jail cell, literally writing this right here, he had peace. See, guys, whenever we, we can look at those situations, and if we put ourselves in those situations, and these men's situations, we would say, there really, we wouldn't have a whole lot of peace. We'd be freaking out. We would be anxious. We would be scared. Like there would be a lot of emotions running through us. But these men believed that God had their best intentions in mind and that he was not going to leave them. He was not going to forsake them and that he was going to see them through to the end. And they believed that. And he did. And he showed himself. See, all of those, all of those stories right there were to show us that God will never ever let you down that he is here with you always that he will be with you always he will never leave you he will not forsake you that he will stick closer than a brother ever has guys and he just shows us over and over and over again in the bible that he will do just that but yet we still lack faith to believe if we give our cares to God that he's going to do anything with it. We think if we give up something to the Lord that everything is just going to just go to garbage and that our life is going to end. So we have to control it. We have to take control over it and we have to hold it close to us and we have to control the narrative because if not, bad things are going to happen. That's going completely against what the word of God tells us to do. Completely against. So guys, we got to start doing it. We got to start, you know, we can't, we cannot we cannot allow the enemy to steal our peace by lying to us and telling us that we have to control the narrative. Because I'll be honest with you guys, peace is the number one thing. It's the number one thing that people in America lack today. Nobody in America has peace. And the reason is, is because we all want to do things our way. We don't think for two seconds to ask the Lord what we should do in a situation. So many times we get in certain situations and then we just start formulating all these ideas and all these decisions and saying, okay, well, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this. And not one time do we stop, stop, sit down, get quiet, pray to God, Lord, what would you have me do? What would you have me do, Lord? But then I find, I find a lot of people that whenever they say, well, I did do that. But here's what we do. We move before we even get an answer. Because we automatically, in the back of our minds, we're automatically assuming, well, God's not going to hear my prayer anyways. He's not going to answer my prayer. We have that doubt. See, that doubt starts to settle in on us. And so we think, 
I pray, Lord, help me in this situation. This is urgent. I'm scared. I'm anxious. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm about ready to get kicked out of my house. I'm about ready to lose my car. I'm about ready to lose my job. My family's a disaster. Lord, help me, please. And then we literally give it like two days. And then all of a sudden we jump the gun and we move out ahead before we can get an answer. See, guys, we as Americans and we as Christians, we have gotten into this habit of getting ahead of God or going in a complete opposite direction of where the Lord would have us go because, guys, we get impatient. We need, we think, guys, all the time that God doesn't hear our prayers. We think that all the time. We're like, Oh, I don't know if God heard my prayers or not. Oh, he heard them. He heard your prayers. You know, we don't, we, the, thing, the problem is that we just don't have the faith that he's going to answer them. Like we have this hard time, like understanding that he's, he hears us. He's going to work things out for us. You know, he says that our hearts and minds will be kept through Jesus Christ our minds are so quick to wonder. Our hearts are wicked and evil in all of its ways, and who should know it? So, guys, he says that our hearts and minds will be kept through Jesus Christ because so quickly our minds can just go off in these crazy, absurd directions. Like, just get nuts. Our heart is constantly changing. Our emotions are always changing. One day we're at peace. The next day we're completely through the roof with anxiety. And so we can't rely on that. We can't rely on, on our hearts and our minds to lead and guide us in the way that we should go. It's God. Jesus, guys, when we give to Jesus, see, he can calm the storms in our minds and in our hearts just as he did the sea. But we have to allow him to do so. We have to allow him to calm ourselves. We have to give it to the Lord and say, Lord, take all these burdens from me, Father, and just please give me your peace. I need peace right now in my life, Father. And I'm going to sit and I'm going to wait patiently because, because, Father, it's your timing. And whenever it's God's timing, guys, it's perfect timing. When we try to jump the gun and get ahead of God and try to do it on our timing, we screw everything up. We mess everything up. And so, guys, we got to start doing it on God's timing. Allow Him to move the way that He wants to move because the, whenever He moves, oh, it's amazing, y'all. It's amazing. Verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, guys, that could be a whole lesson within itself. Because, guys, we find ourselves only thinking about the negative things in our lives, only looking at the bad and never the good. You know, oh, well, yeah, we do look at good at times, but for the most part, we're negative individuals. We like to nitpick and find the negativity in a lot of stuff. <clears throat> Guys, the thing is, is that we as Americans, we live in the greatest country in the world, yet we complain more than anybody. We complain more than any other country. We're so dissatisfied. We're never content you know, we think only if we drove a nicer car, only if we had more money in the bank, if only we had their looks, if we only, if, 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 you know, we need to get rid of all of this, so to speak, stinking thinking, guys, get rid of it and start thinking on these things. Start thinking on what Paul said, because guys, whenever we start to think on these things that are honest and pure and lovely and of good report. And a virtue, guys. It's actually gonna start. It's actually gonna change your minds. Like your your minds are. You're literally gonna start reprogramming your minds. That's why Paul tells us to do this. That's why we need to start thinking on these things continually. Even if our situations aren't the best, start thinking like this. Because actually, there's a study done, and you could actually change your mind and the way you think completely about things. You can change the way you look at things, but it's a process. And they said that it takes about three months of constant changing of how you normally think about things and, and going a new direction. Now, a lot of times we start thinking negative on a lot of things. Everything's negative, 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 negative. Next thing you know, for three months straight, that's all we've been thinking about. Now, all of a sudden, our mindset is programmed to negativity. And we never start, we feel like that, 
we just been kicked to the curb that nobody is nobody cares about us that we're never going to get ahead in life that that nobody loves us that the lord has forsaken us and we start all this negativity and then the enemy comes in and just and just compounds that and just makes it even worse paul saying stop it quit with your with with your stinking thinking change change your mind start to think on these things and guys, after time, you will realize that there is peace in your life, that there is joy in your life. See, the joy of the Lord is our strength. See, joy doesn't come through things. Joy of the Lord comes through a reprogramming of your mind. It's a purposeful thing that you have to do. We have to choose joy. We have to choose it. Joy does not come to us. We just don't like wake up one morning and say, man, I just don't understand. I'm just so joyful and I have no reason to be. It's just, I just, just woke up one day and everything was, I was just so happy of everything. No, guys, the reason why people can walk around and say, I'm just joyful all the time. And they say, well, how in the world are you just joyful all the time? It's because they programmed their minds to be as such. They were thinking on these things. They quit focusing so much on the negativity and started focusing on the positive. And so, guys, whenever we start doing that, then we can change our minds too. So that's why he that's why Paul is really adamant on telling us to 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 think on these things because it's so important because death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so guys because what is in our hearts and in our minds we will speak out. So if there's negativity in our hearts and in our minds then we will speak out negativity. We will spew negativity. We will spew hate. We will spew all uh uh, things that are not of God, okay? And so that's why he says that that we, he was going to renew our hearts and minds, that Christ was going to do that because we have to we have to have a renewing of our hearts and minds because if there's all if there's a hate and negativity in our hearts and our minds, then that's exactly what's going to come out of our mouths and around us and to other people. And we and whenever we start doing that, we are not spreading the love of God. We are not showing people that Christ lives within us. And so we, that's why Paul was so adamant about this. Things that are true, things that are honest, pure, lovely, of a good report, virtuous. And if there be any praise, think on these things. Guys, the thing is, is if there be any praise, there's always praise. Like I said earlier, we have breath in our lungs. We're sitting in a chair right now that was given to us by the Lord. We got a roof over our head that was given to us by the Lord. We have food in our bellies. We get to eat today. Thanks be unto God. So guys, we have we we start looking around and we start seeing all the things that God has blessed us with. And so that's why he says if there be any praise, of course there's praise. Of course there's praise because God has blessed us abundantly, more than we could ever know. And it might not be so physical, but spiritually we are blessed because we're going to make heaven our home because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. You know, I've heard that the that the richest people in the world are the people who have who are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Those are the richest people in the world because they have peace, they have joy, they have comfort, they have the love of God in their lives, and money can never ever buy that. And I'm and I I can contest to that. Money will never ever buy it. No amount of money in the world is worth the peace that the Father has given me, the joy that the Father has given me, the love that he exudes on me. No money is ever going to take that place. It cannot. It cannot. Because no matter how much money, no matter what you drive, no matter what you live in, it will, it, it will never, ever satisfy. It just, it just won't. We go on to verse 9. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. See, so he's saying, learn from me. See what I do and, and follow me. Follow my example and the peace of God will be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. So what he's saying is, is that He's rejoicing greatly with for these individuals. He's so happy for them that they have 
that they are living the way that they should, that they are coming to know the truth of Christ. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am wherewith to be content. Paul did not speak only for self-gain, guys. In fact, guys, I'll be honest with you, he suffered so that others could gain. Paul's life was suffering so that other people could gain from his suffering. He was writing, again, guys, we have to remember, he was writing all of this from a jail cell. He was in jail, imprisoned for speaking the word of God, for trying to speak the truth to people so that they would not be lost, so that they would have eternal life. So all of this speaking was not for self-gain. Absolutely not. He, he didn't gain anything off of it. Guys, he went to jail for trying to make sure that people heard the gospel and that they could make heaven their home. There was no gain in what Paul did here on this earth. Paul was laying his treasures up in heaven. We need to learn to be content in every situation. Because guys, I'm going to be honest with you. If we are going to gripe, moan, and complain in our current situation... Right now, where we are, where the Lord has put us right now, or where, uh, you know, uh, or just just in our current situations, if we gripe, moan, and complain now, then uh, we're going to gripe, moan, and complain in no matter what situation we are in. I'm going to be honest with you, we will. So there has to be a change of heart. There has to be a change of mind. You know, God wants, he wants to see our heart. He wants to see if you will lean on him in time of need, guys. He wants to see if you'll be joyful, not only in the good, but also in the bad. Because, again, he, he wants to see your heart. He, and, and the thing is, he, he wants to know where you guys stand. He wants to know your faith. Will you still praise him, or will you only beg him? Because, guys, I've, I, I've seen so many people that, they oh, when they're on top of the mountain, oh, they're praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be unto God. But then, whenever things start to get a little bit rough, and the road gets to be a little bit rocky, then all of a sudden, it's they're just begging God. There is no more praising Him for what He's doing. Father, thank You for everything that You're doing in my life. Father, I know that this is a hard time right now for me, and I know that this could be, this could just, this is just a season, Father. And so I'm praising you for that next door that's going to open, and I move through it into your will and what you would have for me, Father. If this is a learning lesson for me, Father, open my eyes to see the, 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 the lesson that is before me, and that I may learn, that I might grow spiritually to draw closer to you and have a better relationship with you, Father. Father, give me the faith to, to understand and allow me to lean on you. Help me, Father, with that. But I thank you, Father, for doing this for me because I know that you are for my good. I know that you will never do anything that's going to harm me. I know that you're never going to put me in a situation that is going to damage me or hurt me. And so, guys, we need to be praying more like that. So thank you, Father. Thank you for that door that's going to be open. As we patiently wait in the hallway, waiting for that next door to be open, we praise him. We praise him in the hallway. We praise him when there seems to be a standstill. We praise him whenever there seems to, where there seems to be, uh, you know, we almost feel like there's a, we're trapped a little bit. We don't know what's next. We don't know where, where the Lord's taking us next, but we still praise him because we know that he is leading and guiding us. See, that's the thing. We know by faith, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we walk by faith. We walk. We are walking knowing that God has an open door for us and an open opportunity for us down the way. We just have to get there first. And sometimes that road's rough. Sometimes it's a little bit rocky. Sometimes we might stumble and we might fall, but he's there to lift us up. He's there. He's right there with us every single time. Because, guys, there we just have to have faith that he's going to take care of us. He's taken care of you this far. He's this far. He's gotten you to where you are right now. So we can praise him for that. You know, in Psalms 37, 25, David says, I have been young and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaking, nor his seed begging for bread. We are children of the king. Why on earth would we be the ones of not being content? Guys, right there, he says that 
We, he has never ever seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. See, he's telling us, God will take care of you. We just have to have faith to believe. We need to pro we need to deprogram ourselves of this discontentment and, and, and negative thinking. And you know, and we need to start rejoicing and praising God no matter the situation. No, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I know it's hard, but no matter the situation. We have got to keep on praising the Lord and submitting ourselves to Him. That's what the Bible tells us to do. That's what the Bible tells us to do, and we need to be obedient to that. Rejoice in the Lord always. Not sometimes, not every once in a while, not rejoice in the Lord maybe. No, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice we have to start rejoicing. We have to start changing, deprogramming ourselves of all of this negativity, discontentment, all of this negative, horrible thinking that we have produced over all these years and change it, guys. Guys, here in it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, we've all heard this verse before. Guys, we, I'm sure half of you guys got it on a coffee mug or you guys got it on a t-shirt or a bumper sticker. You know, I've even heard a lot of people say, you know, oh, that's my life verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so whenever, whenever things are presented in front of me, I always say that verse. Philippians 4, 8, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> not Philippians 4, 8, it's uh. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But as soon, guys, as soon as we're confronted with the bad situations, guys, we fold like a deck of cards. We fold up. We get scared. We say things like, oh God, why is this happening to me? Why would you allow this to happen to me? Why are you so far from me? Why, God? Why, why, why? And we just start getting all this, these crazy, and here comes the anxiousness. Here comes all the fear. Uh, here comes everything that starts coming back. How quickly we forget that he is still with us no matter the circumstances. No matter. Guys, no matter what happens, he is still, he is still king. He still sits on the throne. His will is still going to be done no matter what man says. See, we can't do things of our own strength. That shows right there. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we got to quit getting this idea that we are going to, that we have to strengthen up and be strong enough to handle situations. Because I, because there are certain situations that we just can't handle, guys. We got to give them to the Lord. We should give all of our situations to the Lord, honestly. Any hard battle, especially spiritual battles, or even, honestly, guys, even physical battles. I'll retract that. Spiritual and physical battles. We have got to give them to the Lord because it says whenever we are weak, he is strong. So guys, whenever we, we feel like we have no control of a situation, okay? When we have no control over a situation, which a lot of the times we don't, it's really hard. And so we try to, we have this false sense of control over situations whenever we really don't. And we know deep down inside that we have no control. And that's why we get so anxious. Guys, when we don't have control over a certain situation, that is like an automatic Give it to the Lord. I have no control over this situation. I don't know what to do here. I got to give it to you, Lord. And then allow him, allow him to work it out the way that he deems fit. Because when we are weak, he is strong. When we can't bear what is happening around us, he can change it in a second, guys. But we have to trust him and we have to trust his timing. You know, let's not forget the reason Paul wrote this. It wasn't because Christianity is all cupcakes and rainbows, guys. That's not why Paul was writing this stuff. Guys, we are told in the word that it's going to be hard. Christianity is going to be hard. The enemy is out to get us and bad things can and most likely will happen. But we can stand knowing, guys, that we are more than conquerors through Christ. And that we can do all things through him. Through him. We are, see, we are more than conquerors through Christ. Not we are more than conquerors through us. 
or we can conquer all. No, it's not about us. See, it's, it's never been about us. It's all about what Christ can do in your life because here's the thing, guys, is that whenever Christ does these things, then he gets the glory for it. See, if, it, if he said that I can, that we are more than conquerors and left out through Christ, Jesus, if he left that part out, then we would be getting the glory for it. Look at me, I'm more than a conqueror. I, myself, I'm more than a conqueror. And I can do all things. And they left out, and, and that's all it said. It cut the rest of it out. I can do all things. Then, through my own strength, then guess who's getting the glory for it? It's me. And then guess what? Then we become boastful within ourselves. Paul says that we should be boastful for nothing, but yet the, work, the only thing we should boast is the work on the cross. Because that is the only thing that's going to save us, is the work on the cross. That's the only reason why we even have the authority to do what we do. That's the only reason why we can get through these things is because Jesus loves us and he's willing to work with us. He's willing to go before us and fight our battles for us. But we have to allow him. We have to allow him. because And then we have to give him the glory for it. There is no glory for us. Even whenever we get to heaven and we get the crown, you know what that crown's for? I, I used to hear all the time when I was younger, well, you do good things on this earth and you're a Christian, then, then you're going to get a crown in heaven and you're going to get to walk around and strut around with a crown. Man, that is not even true at all. We get a crown so we can take it off and throw it at the feet of Jesus because he deserves it all. He deserves it all. Everything that we are, everything that we do, everything that we have, it's all him. It has nothing to do with us. Those crowns that we get in heaven are to be taken off of our heads and cast at the feet of Jesus because we don't deserve anything. We don't even deserve to be there. And so it's all because of Jesus. So we cast those crowns at the foot of Jesus. And so, guys, it's nothing. Nothing is for our glory. It's all for his glory. And we better start giving glory where glory is due. And that is to the Father. And start allowing him, his glory, and his light to start shining in our lives. Because if we don't, then we are just giving ourselves glory. He gets the glory when the breakthroughs happen. He gets the glory. He deserves the glory because it's him who gets us through. It's only because of him. He's the one who leads us and guides us. He's the light. He is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. He's it. He's the reason why we can get through life. He's the reason why we have peace. He's the reason why we have joy. He's the reason why we are blessed. He's the reason why we're going to make heaven our home. Everything, everything's about Jesus, guys. It's all about Jesus, not about us. So, guys, I'm, I hope that you guys learned something from this. I hope that you guys leave this lesson and just start reminding yourselves to be joyful. Choose joy today, guys. Choose to rejoice. Even whenever the enemy tries to attack you, just know, say, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things. And the enemy, I, bru I will bruise my heel on your head. I'll stomp you out. Behold, we have been given the authority to tread on scorpions and serpents. The enemy has no hold on you. you any, anytime the enemy tries to come in and put these thoughts in your mind of negativity and tries to remind you of bad situations, you rebuke that in Jesus' name. It says in the word that we should take all every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. If they do not line, if these thoughts are negative and they don't line up with the word of God, you take captive of it and you rebuke it in Jesus' name. And I like how he says that I take, take every thought thought captive. So it's not only our own thoughts that we need to take captive, but it's also the enemy that that his thoughts that he puts in our mind because not only are we battling ourselves, but we got to battle the enemy too. So we take every single thought captive and we do away with it in the obedience of Christ. And so guys, today I I pray that you would choose to rejoice in your situations. I choose I I pray that you would choose peace, that you would choose joy and that the that the Holy Spirit, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to start working in your life and start directing and leading and guiding your footsteps in the way that he would have you go. Submit yourself to him. Get on your knees and repent. Seek the Lord's will. Seek his face. It says, seek me and you will find me. Guys, he's not very far away. All we have to do is start seeking him. 
you will find him. That's a promise. That's a promise from our Father. And our Father, he is not a God that he should lie. So guys, seek him. Find that peace that he gives you. He is the Prince of Peace. He is not an author of confusion. Guys, if you're feeling confused right now, if you if your life is full of confusion and just you you just you're you're full of anxiety. You 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 know, you're taking pills to wake up, you're taking pills to fall asleep. Guys, you're just it's just your life is just one big confusing mess. The enemy is the author of confusion. The devil is. Guys, we we got to get rid of that. Guys, calm down. Pray. Start seeking the Lord. You're going to find him. He's going to start speaking to you. Start getting in your word. Start reading the word. Get the word in you, guys. Get the word in you. You guys don't realize. Everybody says, oh, they're just words on a page. No, this is a living, breathing text that will speak into your life. All you have to do is open it and start reading it. And it will literally start to change your mind. It will start to change your heart. You will start to get convictions. You will start to see things in a different light. Guys, got to get this word in you. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. We got to get it in us. Start praying, guys. Start getting in your word. Start filling yourself up with good things, good thoughts. You know, think on these things. Guys, I love you guys. And I hope that you guys have a beautiful and wonderful Saturday. And hopefully you guys will be with us to uh, at 11 o'clock for our live communion. And then also... Uh, at 6.30, we're going to go live for prayer uh, under the tent. So I hope that you guys will join us there too. I love you guys. I pray a blessing over you guys. I pray the peace of God over your lives. I pray that you guys choose joy today. I love you all, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.